the port of Antwerp. It is a many-headed monster. Cut off one head and a new one grows out. This problem seems unsolvable and is only becoming worse. One of the most important questions many ask themselves is, can this battle even be won? More than 110 ton of coke has been intercepted in the port of Antwerp in 2022. Can you imagine how much of the white powder went through without the customs knowing? This is the story about the biggest problem in the port of Antwerp. Because of the seemingly endless money supply smuggling organizations have, it is an uphill battle for law enforcement, police and the government. By the years, these organizations have become lawless and ruthless. Whether it is getting rid of a defense lawyer and a renowned crime journalist, or threaten politicians and even the Dutch king's daughter, these groups do whatever they want at all times. Manolo Tosago is the head of the federal police in Antwerp. His team is responsible for the battle against these criminal organizations. As you probably already know, Antwerp is the second largest port of Europe and one of the two most used ports for criminal organizations to traffic their narcotics through. Manolo estimated that only 10% of the total supply that is shipped from South America to the port of Antwerp is seized, meaning that the other 90% successfully goes through and amasses the organizations behind the shipments many hundreds of millions. This makes you think, if the person responsible for battling the organization already has a hard head in winning this battle, what is there left to do? Ken Wiptus is an attorney in Antwerp that prosecutes the criminals Manolo Tosago and his team arrest. Ken Wiptus is also very well aware of the increasingly difficult situation in the port of Antwerp. He sees a trend that the organizations are moving smarter and are way harder to catch because of the seemingly unlimited funds they have. In an interview he said, these criminals have become much more discreet. They don't use regular phones anymore that can be traced. They now use encrypted phones, which are much harder to track. They also don't drive fast and extravagant cars anymore. Now they drive in small old cars. All their money is stashed in countries abroad and by hiring fiscal experts, they launder their money with ease. All over European ports, more than 200 tons of coke has been seized in 2021. More than one third of that was seized in Antwerp. As South American countries are now also more focused on fighting drug crime in their ports, some shipments are seized before they can even make it on a boat, but it's still a fraction of what is sent. Did you know that there has actually been so much coke seized in the port of Antwerp that they do not have enough ovens to burn it within considerable time? Antwerp's perfect geographical location and infrastructure keep attracting smugglers. However, that's not all. The port itself is extremely large and wide, making it impossible to protect it from unwanted visitors. Furthermore, there are many direct lines between South America. Containers are processed very fast and as icing on the cake, only a fraction of the 11 million containers passing through the port are scanned, meaning the vast majority goes through unscanned and potentially stuffed with coke. Meanwhile, the manufacturers of the coke in Colombia, Peru and Bolivia are producing more than ever before. For the farmers, the coca plant is often the only profitable thing they can grow to earn some money. Governments have tried to give these farmers money and other resources to grow something else than coca plants, yet to no avail. After the farmers met with people from the government, just moments later the cartel came by and offered them double of whatever the government had just offered them to keep producing coca plants. The farmers also do not really have a choice, as they are typically in territories claimed by the cartels. We can all imagine what these cartels could do to you if you do not cooperate. According to the DEA, cartels can produce 2 million kilos of coke each year. Some suggest there might even be an abundance of the powder at the moment. However, if that is the case, cartels can leave their supply for years without touching it in order to keep the prices controlled. There have been indications that cartels have offered less supply to the market in the hopes of driving the prices up. Supply and demand is also a high importance to the underworld, just like any other economy. The street value of one gram of white powder in Antwerp is 50 euros. In 20 years, this price has not changed. Not necessarily because of fluctuations in price, but simply because paying with a 50 euro bill is the easiest. Can you imagine a dealer with a wallet full of change for his customers? I sure can't. Deals have to be done fast and discreet. Paying by card is not an option either. 
so the 50 euro bill will remain the most important for many more years. Even though the price has not changed, the quality of the stuff has become more pure and thus better. According to the analysis of the DEA, powder in Antwerp is 87 to 90% pure in most cases. While the consumer gets one gram for 50 euros, the farmers in South America get 700 euros for their kilo. The cartels for which they produce sell it to the criminal organizations in Europe for eight to 10,000 euros per kilo. Those organizations then sell it to smaller organizations for 25,000 euros per kilo. The low level dealers then cut it up several times and sell it to the end consumers. Costs such as bribes, transportation cost and stash costs are also part of the price increases. But the fact that it goes from 700 euros per kilo to 50,000 euros shows the insane profit margins in the underworld. The GFI, Global Financial Integrity, estimated that the yearly revenue from international trafficking to be about 385 billion euros to 589 billion euros in 2017. It has only grown over the years and most likely will keep growing in the future. So what is really the solution? You can conclude that the import in the port of Antwerp is impossible to battle. The large amounts of money earned make it easier for the drug lords to buy the necessary protection they need in order to stay out of the hands of law enforcement. There are so many people in between the dealer on the street to the kingpin who is at the head of the organization, making it truly hard to catch them. Furthermore, different organizations now work with each other instead of against each other and share their expertise. This then benefits both organizations, creating an even bigger monster. A prime example of that is the super cartel with the Kinahans, Tahi, Edin and Imperiale. As any other business, there is a clear division of roles and responsibilities with the narcotics trade. Coordinators in the underworld play an increasingly important role. Their role is to make sure all transports run as smooth as possible. They have a lot of expertise and an extensive network in the underworld, as well as the civil world. These coordinators can function as intermediaries between South American cartels and the organizations in Antwerp. They facilitate the entire transport from the ports in South America all the way through Antwerp and ultimately deliver the goods to the criminal organizations in Antwerp. The coordinators can bundle shipments destined for different organizations coming from South America. Once in the port of Antwerp, each shipment will have a different stamp or color wrapping per organization. The coordinators make sure that the coke gets out of the container, divide it per group based on the stamp or color wrapping, and deliver it to them. These independent coordinators have a lot of power and can make themselves huge sums of money. To gain this power, they are headhunting each other every day in and around the port of Antwerp. Leaked documents in 2018 revealed that corruption in the entire city of Antwerp is an ever-growing problem. Dock workers, custom officers, government officials and police officers are accepting bribes more often than ever before. Looping back to what was discussed earlier, it makes perfect sense. So much money is made. Paying a dock worker his yearly salary for helping an entire container go through is a fraction of the profit that container will make the organization. Can you blame them? These underworld figures want to get in contact with as many people as possible who can be of any meaning to them in the coke trade. They recruit them in cafes near the ports, via Facebook, or simply by knocking on their door at home. If you refer someone to these groups, you can already earn 10,000 euros know a colleague who is in debt or maybe going through a divorce, put him in touch with us and we'll make sure his problems are covered. A truck driver can earn anywhere between 25,000 to 75,000 just for moving one container. This is a three minute job at most. Who can say no to that? But this is how it works if they voluntarily want to work for a drug organization. As you can imagine, this is not always the case. Often these dock workers, custom officers, government officials and police officers are left with no choice. These organizations know exactly what these people can do and mean for their drug trade. They simply just threaten them. We know you can do this for us, so you are now working for us. If you don't comply, you are in trouble. We know where you live. We know who your wife and kids are. Saying no is absolutely not an option. Many suggest a stronger screening of all those working in the port. However, there are 60,000 people working in the port of Antwerp, excluding any government officials or police officers. Good luck screening all of those people. 
At the end of the day, the port is the main moneymaker for Belgium. How can this problem be addressed without slowing down the activity in the port? That leaves prevention as the only possible measure to battle this somewhat. Governments have to invest much more time, effort and resources into making people aware about the dangers of the substances and make people stop using them. What do you think should be done to battle this problem? It's a serious problem and no one seems to have a good answer. Let me know in the comments. For this video, I took a different approach. Instead of discussing a person or a group, I chose a specific topic. Was it interesting enough? Really, let me know what you think. So I can either do more of these or just focus on specific people again. For now, as always, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Much more to come.